These are 12 unique tech products and accessories from Amazon that are actually worth the money. Every time I make one of these videos, I spend hours searching for the most interesting items to share, so I hope you'll find some of these useful. To start is not a piece of tech, but something that you can keep on your desk or around your home to organize all of your everyday carry items. This is a really nice organizer built of steel and wood that after seeing Omnir mention, I just had to buy it. For $40, it's incredibly well built and looks stunning. On here, I keep my watches laid out on this top section and then throw my phone, wallet, and keys into the bottom compartment. If you've been watching the videos over the last few months, you might have been able to tell that I've become a Porsche fanboy and this $9 model GT2 RS is something I had to buy. This is the perfect item to keep on my desk shelf, but it could also make a great gift for any Porsche lover. Next is the most interesting phone case I've ever seen, the Arc Pulse. I have this on the S24 Ultra, but they also sell iPhone versions. It comes in a square box, separated into two pieces, and then snaps on to the top and bottom of your phone. Personally, I love this as I'm someone who does like going caseless with my phones, but the S24 is just a little too slippery, so this gives me some more peace of mind that I won't destroy the corners or the back camera. The frame wraps around the camera and just looks sick. I do have a Moft MagSafe sticker thrown onto the back, as I still use a variety of different MagSafe accessories every day, mostly my desk charger and car mount. Next, Optimum said IEMs were good, so I had to hop on the bandwagon with these ones from Sennheiser. They're just $100, which I think is a really good value for what these are. The design, first of all, is enough to sell me, the transparent buds just look sweet, but they wrap around your ears and are quite comfortable to wear. The sound quality is honestly impressive, and the noise isolation on these is fantastic. I really can't hear anything when I have these in. I did get these in part to monitor audio as they're really good for that, but I've more so enjoyed just having these in while working, listening to music. You can plug these straight into your laptop and they sound fine that way, but you can also grab something like the Audio Engine D1 to power these. This is a super compact headphone amp and DAC. With a headphone jack you can plug into at the front, a button to quickly turn power on, and a volume knob to adjust your volume. It plugs in over USB-C, and there's also an analog output at the back, meaning you could use these to power some speakers. The compact design of this makes it great for travel so that you don't have to sacrifice any sound quality. Though as a non-audiophile, I don't notice a huge difference, and for the most part, just enjoy having this for quick volume adjustment. That aside, I've yet to game with the IEMs, I know I know, but that's because I just got in the Audi's Maxwells, and these are really interesting. I had heard so many things, good and bad, and couldn't really get a clear answer, so I had to check these out for myself. These are what I'd call a proper audiophile pair of headphones, and while they're not geared towards ultra competitive gamers, they're great for kind of casual players who want to talk to their friends, or more likely get immersed into single player games. For that, the sound quality is fantastic, and these are by far the best sounding gaming headphones that I've ever had. Maybe I'm just a baby, but I do think these are kind of heavy. Not so much that I can't wear them, but I just didn't expect them to be so noticeable. That aside though, I find them to be really comfortable with how big the cushions are. Being wireless is really convenient whether you game on PlayStation or PC, and by the way, with the USB dongle, you can quickly flip a switch to change between operating systems. In my opinion, if you're someone who plays mostly single player story driven titles, give these a shot because you can always return them, but I think you'll like them a lot. Next up is the Creator Kit from Moft, who is the sponsor of today's video. Unboxing the incredibly well-designed kit, which by the way, can be converted to an EDC organizer afterwards, you'll find four accessories that are really helpful to use with your iPhone, or even if you're on the S24 like myself, will work perfectly with their MagSafe sticker. First is their Mova snap case, which is made of vegan leather on the exterior and microfiber on the interior to prevent any scratches when throwing this on. With MagSafe built in, it works perfectly with the snap-on stand and wallet, giving room for two cards and allowing you to prop up your phone in landscape or portrait mode wherever you are. Next up is the phone lanyard that I'm a huge fan of. It makes sure you always have quick access to your phone for taking photos without having to carry it. Now, the fourth and most useful of all of these accessories is Moft's invisible tripod. It functions as a tripod stand so you can easily take stabilized shots while on the go. It's incredibly quick to set up, taking just seconds to open and prop up for making 
content. MagSafe in the tripod ensures it stays securely connected to your phone at all times while taking selfies or vlogging. Like the wallet stand, you can set it up in portrait and landscape modes where you have far more control over the angle you set it at. This means whether you want to jump on a video call, shoot an overhead shot, or watch a movie, it works perfectly. If you want to check out the creator kit for yourself, head to the link in the description. Now, I've never been much of a mobile gamer, but that's partially because mobile controls feel so awkward. I've tried the Backbone 1 in the past, and it is really nice. The software almost makes it feel like its own gaming console, and its slim design is great when you're traveling. Though, in terms of gaming ergonomics, it's really not that great. The Razer Kishi, on the other hand, is a controller I just got in last week, and this is one that actually makes me want to play some mobile games. It has its own Nexus launcher, but that's not super important. What I really like about this is that it actually feels like a proper controller, as the size is a lot more comparable to something like the DualSense, and it wraps around your hands nicely. The texture on the back is very grippy, and the triggers above have enough travel to feel comfortable for shooters. All of the buttons provide tactile feedback, and the joysticks actually feel natural, which was my biggest complaint with the backbone. Other than requiring me to take off my case, this is a really fun piece of tech to use. Now, sometimes I want to throw on music or a podcast in the office, but I don't really want to wear headphones, or I'm away from my desk. For these times, having a nice pair of desktop speakers has always been a requirement for my home office. The Audio Engine HD3s are a really nice compact pair of speakers that sound great. The bass isn't impressive given their size, but it's not something I care about, as these can still fill the room with whatever I'm listening to. At the front left speaker, you have quick access to a volume knob and a button to enter Bluetooth pairing. I have these sitting atop the D1 stands from Audio Engine and plugged into my Caldigit TS4 dock. Now, for traveling, having a power bank is super helpful to keep all of your devices, even laptops, charged. I have two of Anchor's Prime banks here, the Chunky Boy being 27,650 watts, and the slightly more compact version, 20,000 watts. This large option provides you with up to 140 watts on each of the two USB ports, or 65 watts on the USB-A port. On the smaller option, you're a little more limited with 100 watts on each of the USB ports, and the same 65 watt max over USB-A. If you want to be charging a laptop or gaming handheld, I think it might be worth going for the larger one, as this gives you a ton of power in a relatively small form factor. On the LED screen, you can see the current battery of the dock, along with the progress of each device that's currently being charged. You can of course keep the banks powered up over USB-C, but as a separate add-on, Anchor sells this wireless charging pad that's really convenient to use. When I'm home though, I store these away and use my Nexo power brick from Ugreen to keep everything charged. This offers up to 100 watts of power over the USB-C input, which is perfect to charge the Windows laptop I've been testing, or my Legion Go. It's super convenient to consolidate the charging of up to 4 devices into this one brick, as there's 3 USB-C ports alongside a single USB-A. Next up is a screwdriver from Hodo. I've bought a lot of products from them, all of which have had an aesthetic and minimal vibe to them. The screwdriver comes in a nice grey box that I really like, because it doesn't look like a typical tool box, so you could easily keep this on your desk and it wouldn't look out of place. Inside is the screwdriver itself, along with a bunch of different bits for whatever you might need. It has some heft to it and it's more than powerful enough for most scenarios. This is going to be especially nice for my next PC build. Its blue color looks really good and the flashlight at front lets you see clearly into any dark corners. They sell a bundle for an extra $25 that includes a smaller handheld screwdriver that's great for more precise screwing. If you pull up the top frame, it reveals a ton of different bits, all enclosed in this compact housing. If you want to go from upgrading the SSD in your Windows laptop to building custom PCs, having these two screwdrivers on hand will prepare you for basically anything. So those were 12 or so of the most unique products I found on Amazon that are actually worth spending your money on. I'll have links to everything down in the description if you want to check any of these items out. If you found something you liked here, go and watch this video next where I go over all the desk setup upgrades that I regret not making sooner. Take care.